bird scooter blocking up the sidewalk. Hey, Lion, you got another one of these scooters here that's been uh, messed with, or it's the same one, I don't know. But it's at the Publix on Ponce. Two bird scooters. And a lime e-bike. Been sitting here forever. Let me get this junk. Just so you know, it can't drive 55. Hmm. Someone I know. Why does bird and lime think it's okay to leave their stuff on private property? 1001 Ponce Leon Avenue. Come get this junk. They done took both of them out. Ain't no way do I want to sit out there in that and wait for somebody to run me over. You know, one of my neighbors uh, told me this joke. Uh, what's the difference between a liberal and a conservative? A uh, conservative is a liberal who's been mugged. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so there you go. So maybe Karen Bass is now a conservative. Who knows? <laughs> I'm Larry Elder. This has been the Larry Elder Show for Epic Times, and we've got a country to save. See you next time. So um, can I can I take a, a, a step back for a second yeah. here, right? Because we've had a lot of conversations in the past about will young people turn out. Okay, if you were a betting person, and over the last forty years you bet that young people won't turn out in significant numbers, and those young people were baby boomers, right, in the eighties, Gen Xers in the nineties, millennials in the early two thousands, you have been right more than you have been wrong. But that's history. Since 2008, we've seen essentially a doubling of participation among young people. We went from an off from a time when about 17 to 20 percent to now 35 percent, and this poll is tracking at the exact same level of 2018, which was historic and record-breaking, and it's even higher in in, in battleground states. Wow. Now joining me to discuss this is Soledad Ursula. Her Twitter account says Latina, libertarian, free thinker. Elected Venice Neighborhood Council board member. She's also the daughter of the former Democrat State Senate Majority Leader uh, Gloria Romero. GOP losing young voters over abortion, guns, climate change. Soledad, thank you for joining us. What should the Republicans do? Hi, Larry. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Um, I mean, really, the number one takeaway from this, uh, when we look at what's going on in California, um, it's the ground game, and ballot harvesting is legal in California. So before we talk about policy issues, how to support young people, it's all about ballot harvesting. When you look at some of the national races for Democrats, you don't even need a candidate anymore. It's better that they not debate. They can hide out in the basement. It's just may the best ballot harvester win, and that's what Republicans need to do. We need to play the game and beat them at it. Talk to us about ballot harvesting in California versus other places. Well, again, it is legal here in California. That means well, first, that somebody, first, tell, tell us what ballot harvesting is for people who don't know. It means that somebody can collect a ballot and sign it out on your behalf. Uh, this is a good thing, let's say, particularly for older people, people who need help uh, filling out their ballots, and then they entrust you to then turn it in. Well, sometimes that's not always the case, and many you know, good deeds can end up nefarious. But what that means is that any ballot you find out is, you know, grounds to be turned in. And look at what Gavin Newsom did. Our governor, to remember, uh, when he defeated his recall, two weeks after defeating the recall, he signed a law into order that made vote-by-mail permanent for California. So now, whether or not you even live in the state, maybe you moved out of state a few months ago, every registered voter is now sent a mail. So think about all the plethora of ballots just laying around. I mean, myself, I have three ballots sent here that, you know, aren't even for me. They're for, you know, prior tenants, and I've been here for six years. What do Republicans do about mail-in voting, and what do Republicans do about early voting? 
they need to get on board. I mean, Democrats have really paved the way. They are the experts in ballot harvesting, and they're also the experts in early voting. Uh, look at some of the issues that came up, especially in Arizona. I mean, what Republicans need to do is don't wait till the last day. Right. Um, even in Los Angeles, it rained on election day. That you know, so maybe you know, quite a bit of the vote did not show up, but the rain was quite unusual for Los Angeles. We had flooding in Venice. So people need to understand early voting is better and just play by the rules. You know, beat Democrats at their own game. All right, Saul Davis, we have the most strict gun control laws in the nation. And every time something happens, they want to pass more and more and more. That's right. And I mean, really what they're saying is they're restricting your right to defend yourself. In L.A. County, we've seen a surge in uh, public carry permits, you know. So what you really see is that is the ultimate um, sort of metric of whether people will feel safe or not. And what's funny, in Los Angeles, even Karen Bass, it turned out, is a gun owner. Remember, she had two guns stolen two from her of, house. She, and she two, actually yeah. put two guns on the street to criminals. <laughs> right, she sure so did. So it looks like everybody else has guns. And during the debate, um, uh, Karen Bass was asked uh, on a scale from uh, 0 to 10, 10 being uh, the most safe, how safe do you feel in, in Los Angeles? She said, I feel like a 10. And you're right, just a few weeks after that debate, her house had broken into, and not one, but two guns were stolen. And then the second debate, she was asked the same question, given what happened to you on a scale from zero to ten, how safe do you feel? She said five. <laughs> you know, one of my neighbors uh, told me this joke. Uh, what's the difference between a liberal and a conservative? A uh, conservative is a liberal who's been mugged. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so there you go. So maybe Karen Bass is now a conservative. <laughs> Oh. The right wing media machine. Now, through a reporter, Matt Taibbi of Substack, Elon Musk disclosed internal communication between Twitter executives about suppressing the Hunter Biden story. Through a series of tweets by Taibbi, here is what we learned the Biden team had a direct line to Twitter to censor Hunter Biden laptop story. By 2020, requests from connected actors to delete tweets were routine. One executive would write to another, more to review from the Biden team. The reply would come back, handled. Celebrities and unknowns alike could be removed or reviewed at the behest of a political party. Both parties had access to these tools. For instance, in 2020, requests from both the Trump White House and the Biden campaign were received and honored. However, the system was not balanced. It was based on contacts because Twitter was and is overwhelmingly staffed by people of one political orientation. There were more channels, more ways to complain, open to the left than to the right. On October 14, 2020, the New York Post, of course, published Biden's secret emails, an expose based on the contents of the Hunter Biden abandoned laptop. Twitter took extraordinary steps to suppress the story, removing links, posting warnings that it may be unsafe they even blocked its transmission via direct message, a tool reserved for extreme cases, for example, child pornography. White House spokeswoman Kaylee McEnany was locked out of her account for tweeting about the story. Although several sources recalled hearing about a general warning from the feds that summer, there's no evidence of any government involvement in the laptop story. The decision was made at the highest levels of the company, but without the knowledge of CEO Jack Dorsey, with the former head of legal public policy playing a key role. I've got a question. After the publication of internal Twitter documents showing that Twitter executives suppressed Hunter Biden's laptop story, and after even CBS acknowledged that the laptop story was true, where is the apology from the over 50, quote, senior intelligent officials who signed the letter claiming the laptop story, quote, has all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation, close quote. Joe Biden claims the Hunter Biden laptop story, of course, is bogus, remember? 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plan. They have said that this is has all the care Four, five former heads of the CIA, both parties, say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. This is classic Trump. We have four days left, and all of a sudden, there's a laptop. There's overwhelming evidence that, from the intelligence community, that the Russians are engaged. I still think that the stories from the fall about your son Hunter were Russian. Yes.
percent of Joe Biden voters would have acted differently. Now, of course, we know a few weeks ago, the New York Times confirmed that the content is real. Do you think the media acted inappropriately when they instantly dismissed uh, Hunter Biden's laptop as Russian disinformation? And what can we learn from that in ensuring that what we label as disinformation is truly disinformation and not reality? And my, my problem with Hunter Biden's laptop is I think it's totally irrelevant. I mean, it's not whether it's disinformation or, I mean, I don't think the Hunter Biden's um, business relationships have anything to do with who should be president of the United States. So I, I didn't find, I don't find it to be interesting. I mean, that, that would be my problem with the, that as a, as a major news story. Interesting. You see, Big Tech suppressed the laptop story because Big Tech wanted to suppress the laptop story. They just needed a pretext. If killing that story, no matter how accurate it was, no matter how wrong it was to spike, it meant that Trump's out mission accomplished as far as the left is concerned. You see, half the country considers Trump worse than Hitler, Stalin, Mao combined, and couldn't care less about FBI pressure, intrusion, involvement in suppressing the Hunter Biden laptop story, so long as Trump is out. Here, $200 per person of all descendants of slaves in California for, quote, housing discrimination, close quote. Total cost, nearly a half a trillion dollars. The nation's biggest reparations effort ever. Joining me to discuss all of this is radio host and founder of Brotherhood of a New Destiny, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson. Reverend, how you doing? All is well. I don't feel no way strong. <laughs> no way sad. I feel like going on. Now, Jesse, you are from the South. Yes. Obama's from Hawaii, <laughs> by, by way of Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> What's your reaction when he, when he speaks like that? You know, when I really, really think about it, it's kind of sad because they make a mockery of black people when they want to use them. They go into the churches, they go into the areas, and they try to sound like them and pretend that they are part of them and that they're looking out for the blacks when they're really not. And they're using the blacks for their personal gain. And it's, it just, it's unfortunate. And that's why I'm encouraging black people, all black people, they need to start thinking for themselves. They, be, they need to become individuals again and get away from identifying with color, but to identify with what is right. Because what they do in these churches when it's time to vote is really, really a put down to black people. It shows a lack of respect. But the blacks, are not all, not all, not all, but most are so caught up. They don't seem to get that they're being made a mockery of. They're so caught up with the color thing. I saw a black preacher uh, supporting Warnock the other day, and he was saying things like, well, I don't know what you stand for, but I'm going to stand with the Lord. I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to vote for Warnock. That's not standing with God. That's standing with Warnock. And the blacks are going, amen, praise the Lord. And I just think that the way it was when I was growing up in Alabama on a plantation under the so-called Jim Crow law, black people had more of a respect for one another, for themselves. They didn't think as group. They thought as individual. And they did. They did very well then. They got much respect then as well. And, you know, and Jesse Lee, you talk about how uh, black people being used. I mean, look at look at uh, Joe Biden. For decades, he's been talking about how he went to the black church. He was I was raised in the black church. Yeah, for real, for real. And people at the church said they never saw him. <laughs> he said I, I came there on Sundays to strategize on how to desegregate movie theaters and restaurants in Wilmington, Delaware. Even the New York Times said there was no evidence at all he did any of this. And his aides gently reminded him to stop saying it, and he kept saying it anyway. Yeah. Said it for decades said the NAACP endorsed him in all of his races. NAAC is the 501c3. They can't endorse. They didn't endorse him in any of them. He lied and said that he got arrested attempting to visit Nelson Mandela during apartheid South Africa uh, and Nelson Mandela when he got out when uh, Joe Biden was vice president came to the White House to thank him. None of that ever happened. And people aren't even insulted by this. Yeah. Also, Joe Biden says something like, if you don't vote for him, you're not black enough right. or something like right. that. All these insults that they're really putting right out there in the face of black folk, I just it just it's time out for that. And I'm wanting black people to start reading and looking for information for themselves to know who they are voting for and why they are voting for them. And that way, come election time, 
when these people come to their churches, I thought that you were not allowed to go into a church and promote a particular politician. You can't say vote for Warner or you can't say vote for Biden or Hillary in the church because whenever a white person does that for the Republican representative, it would have been out of control. It would have been mm -hmm. looking at the 503C1 trying to put them out of business and it just wasn't allowed on the white people's side, Republican side, why allow when it comes to trying to get the black folks? It just the lovey dovey. How geopolitically, the Eurasian landmass, how far down the road is the CCP to consolidating it, sir? Well, look, you you you, you are the, the geopolitician. You you know Mackinder Spikeman, the heartland, the rimland, you get all of that. But most people in you know in our civilization today in the English speaking world have no idea what what the names are that I just mentioned, Steve. How far are they down it? It doesn't really matter how far down it they are in terms of the exact chronology. The issue is they have a plan. That's the problem. They have a plan. Uh, the only plan we have here is to undermine America. We have an elite that detests not only America, but Western civilization, having just come back from the, you know, one of the most important sites in our civilization where our Lord and Savior walked the earth. It was illuminated to me. When, you, when you've got a young Israeli guy who's underneath Jerusalem with us on the, the, the remains, the archaeological remains of the original Jerusalem, the city of King David, and he says, he says, the only thing we have are the values that we give to our children, and America has lost. When, when an Israeli is saying that to me, it's kind of a wake-up call, because what is our plan? Well, what it, when you see the Project Veritas video at a school mm. in Chicago that costs $40,000, they're handing out dildos to, to children and, and butt plugs, and the dean is, is you know, when asked o on a private camera, what do your, the, 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 the trustees of the board think of, of this group? this grooming of the children. He says, they love it. It's just gay sex. Steve, I mean, how can I answer your question? The Chinese have unrestricted warfare. They have one belt, one road. They have the, the 100th anniversary of the establishment of, of the CCP in, 19, uh, in, in two, 2049. And, and dude, you, you know that, that date, 2049, they want to have control of everything. You are either part of China or you are a vassal state. Period. End of story. Coming to an end. The exchange itself had looked like something out of a movie. Griner, on the far left, approaches a group on an airport tarmac in the United Arab Emirates that includes convicted Russian arms merchant Victor Boot, who then heads to a plane that will take him back to Russia. Brittany will soon be back in the arms of her loved ones. A short time later, President Biden announced the deal at the White House alongside Griner's wife. Yeah, I'm just standing here um, overwhelmed with emotions. Overwhelmed because Griner had been held in Russia for some nine months on minor drug charges. But the terms of the deal were tough for many to swallow. Victor Boot, one of the most notorious arms dealers in the world, is now free. I'm glad an American's coming home. She was arrested for a trumped-up charge, but to exchange the merchant of death for this, it's made us weaker, yeah. it's made Putin stronger, and it's made Americans more vulnerable. And the White House failed to win the release of other Americans, like Paul Whelan, who have been imprisoned for years. None of them generated the same level of attention as Griner. Our choices was uh, Brittany or no one at all. Bring home one American or no American at all. And while we have not yet succeeded in securing Paul's release, we are not giving up. We will never give up. Now, Griner's first stop will be a U.S. military hospital in Texas before presumably heading home to Arizona. In Washington, Doug Luzader, Fox News. <laughs> Thank you.